Welcome to episode two of No BSTS, and this is the one where we talk about basic functions. Now, this is the series where we do five to 15 minute short videos to let you learn TypeScript at your speed. And so today about functions, we're going to talk about how to import and export them as well as define them. And then I'll cover the number one misconception that I hear when it comes to TypeScript. But let's jump right into it. Okay, picking up where we left off. We have our basics file that was in here from before, but we're going to go and create a new file called functions.ts. That's where we're going to define our functions. And then we're going to create another file called functions test.ts. And that's where we're going to import our functions and kind of test them out. So let's drop this one down here. Okay, cool. Let's go and define a function now. Let's do it just like you would in JavaScript. We'll create a function called add numbers. And it's going to take two values, A and B. And it's going to return A plus B. Easy peasy, right? And now we want to get this over to functions test and use it. So let's do module.exports equals add numbers. Okay, so that's a problem. In TypeScript, we don't like module.exports. So what we need to do instead is do export default and then give it add numbers. And that's going to export add numbers as the default export from this module. So in this case, what you do in functions test is to import that add numbers from and then give it functions. And so the default export is what comes out here as the default here. Uh, if you wanted a named export, then you do this. And we'll do that in just a second. But let's try that over here. Let's do a console log of add numbers one plus two. And then let's also do one plus Jack and see how that goes. And so we can see that TypeScript is already complaining over here. But if we were to go and run it, so let's go bring up the console and then try out MPX TS node with functions test. It's going to tell us what VS Code is already telling us, which is that parameters A and B implicitly have the any type. What is the any type? The any type is what we're trying to avoid when it comes to TypeScript. It means that it could be anything. It could be a string, a number, a date, an array, an object, undefined, null. It could be anything. And so we don't want that. We want to be able to control the types. And we want to be able to specify in this case that when you add two numbers together, they are indeed numbers. So how do you do that? Well, as before, after the variable name declaration, so in this case, A, or the parameter name declaration in this case, we're going to go and put in a colon and then the type. So in this case, we want a number. Same thing with B over there. We want that to be a number as well. And so we can see, hey, look down here. Now this no longer works. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So if we were to go run it again, we would see that there's a problem. But in this case, it's because we're specifying an argument of type string, which is not of a type number. So we need to go and change or just kind of remove, in this case, the errant call. So what is this returning? Well, if I do Command-K, Command-I again, we're going to get that great hover. And it's going to tell us that in this case, it's a number. It not only tells us that it's a number, which is already inferred because a number plus a number has to be a number, but it also shows us how to do it syntactically. All we need to do is take colon, in this case, after the parentheses, and then put in number. And that's exactly where the definition of the return type goes on a function. So we're letting, again, VS Code do all the help there. So what happens if you're the kind of person who likes to define their functions via const? Let's try that out. We'll create one called add strings. And we'll equate that to a function, which is going to take a string, one, and then a string, two. And then it's going to output string one. String two, like that. Okay, cool. Well, where do you put the return type on something like this? Well, let's try Command-K, Command-I, and see if it gives us any help. It really doesn't in this case. It does give us what is syntactically the type definition of add strings, but it doesn't actually show us where we'd use it here. Same sort of thing, though. We're going to put colon and then string. And in order to import that on the other side, we would use the 
object destructuring and then give it add strings. We even hinted on it, which is super cool. Okay, let's do console.log a. And then now once we we're now hinted that we need a B in there or something. And there we go. We're good to go. Awesome. But what happens if I want to say, okay, great. I want to be able to take the case where I just put an A and then have string two defaulted to something else. So you can do that in JavaScript, but you can also do that in TypeScript, of course. You do that after the variable declaration. So in this case, str2 colon string is the declaration. So that after that, we put equals and then the default value. So in this case, something like maybe string, and that's fine. And so now we're okay on that side over there. Great, cool. Okay, so let's take the case where you've got a function where you want a certain parameter to be of one of a set of different types. So let's create a new function called format. And it's going to take a title to the string. And then it's going to take a param, which in this case can be a string or a number. How cool was that? So this is kind of like an or. We use the same symbol as an or, but really in reality, this is a union type in TypeScript. And it means that you're creating a union type where any of the types that qualify are okay for entry into this particular parameter. All right, again, we're going to return a function. So in this case, we are going to just do the title. And of course, that's fine. Just give it param and uh, JavaScript is going to go and coerce that to a string in there. That's fine. Okay, great. All right, well, that's all well and good. But how do you specify a function where you're actually not going to return anything at all? Well, let's go and wrap our format function and just print it out. So we'll create a new function called print format. And it takes the same input types. And then in this case, we're just going to console log the format with those parameters. So title and param. Great. And let's see what command K command I can tell us about this. What well, tells us that the output is of a type void right there, but it's not giving us that great syntax hint. So let's go and just copy that. And then again, we do colon and then void. And that's the, what we're looking for. Okay, well, that's how you specify a function that doesn't return anything. How about one that returns a promise? So let's do a fetch data type thing. And that's going to take a URL, which is a string. And then it's going to turn a promise, which will just resolve to, you know, data from URL, something like that. So how do we specify that this is going to be a promise? We do command K, command I here, and you see that we specify it using promise. And then in between left and less than and greater than, you put in string. So let's put that in there, like so. Now, if you, in your setup, get an issue where it's telling you that promise is not defined, then you'll need to go over here to TS config and then go into the target and change that to something like ES next. And that defines when you compile the target specification for the ECMAScript that you're looking for uh, to support. All right. So what happens when you want to be able to take multiple arguments and then coalesce them into an array? Well, let's create a function called introduce and try that out. And introduce will take a citation to string. And then any arguments that occur after that will put into an array of names, which is also an array of strings. And then I'm going to output that as a string. And in this case, I'll just return that with the citation and then the names joined. Just like that. Easy peasy. As promised, let's talk about the number one misconception that people have when they ask me questions about TypeScript. And that's around when types are enforced with TypeScript. TypeScript only enforces types at compile time, not at runtime. And people really get this wrong quite a lot. So let me give you an example and really prove to you that they're not enforced at runtime. So the first thing I'm going to do is create another function and export it. And that function is going to be called get name. And it's going to take a user that has a first and a last name. 
and it's going to return a string because out of this, we are just going to return a new string that has the user first name and user last name. Okay, so let's go bring that over into our test functions and then console log that. And I'll give it an empty object and it's not happy about that because it doesn't have a first and a last name. I give it my first and last name and it'll be happy. And that's great. Let's go bring it up and try it out. Fine, perfect, awesome. But now we wanna go and actually interface this with some JavaScript code. So I'm gonna go create a new file called JS function tests. And that's going to import that get name. So the way that I do that is I do const get name, equals require, and then I'm gonna do functions. And then again, I'm going to do console.log with get name. And I'll just give it first is A, second is B. And there you go. Now, can I run this? I cannot, because what it's going to tell me is that there is no module there. So it can't actually find functions because it's not functions.js, it's functions.ts. So what we need to do is compile that. I'm gonna do mpx tsc functions.ts, and that's gonna give us functions.js. It's gonna compile it into JavaScript for us. And now we can run it. And it works, you know, A undefined. Oh, that's right, because that should be last. Okay, fine, let's give that a try. And there you go, A, B. But what happens if I do this? If I just give it nothing. JavaScript's certainly happy about that. Let's give it a go, boom. And why is that? Well, can't read property first of undefined. Sound familiar? So here's the deal. If I go over here to functions.js and scroll down, we can see that the implementation of get name is just simply user.first plus user.last. So it's not actually doing the type checking at runtime. It only does the compile time type checking. And there's a bunch of good reasons for that runtime type checking would be hilariously expensive. So here's what you gotta know. If you're going to interface your TypeScript code with JavaScript code, always make sure those interface points are the points where you put in that type safety, not just in your types, but also in some handy helper stuff. So let's try that out. Let's actually make this a lot more safe. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the optional chaining operator, which is question mark here. And what that's gonna do is make sure that, in this case, user is defined before we dereference it. So I'll hit save. And then again, we'll compile it. And now in this case, when you run, it's gonna tell us undefined, undefined. So how is this magic happening? Well, let's go take a look over the compiled code and we can see now that the implementation of get name has some checking in it to make sure that user actually exists before we dereference it. But now what if you don't like this kind of undefined undefined? Is there an easy way to kind of get around that? Well, yes, there is. There's the null coalescing operator or question mark question mark, which basically says if you uh, have an undefined over on this side of the, of the expression, then use something on this side of the expression. So let's put in, say, first. And then last. And there you go. Now let's try it again. First compile. And then run. And now we get first and last if those are undefined. But if they are defined, you'll get them. So let's try that out. Perfection, I love it. Okay, so in the next video, we are gonna take a look at functions that take functions as parameters, as well as return functions, as well as how to define a type as a function. In the meantime, of course, feel free to like and share this video with your friends, hit that subscribe button, and click that bell if you wanna be alerted the next time another one of these videos comes out.